I want to talk to you just for a few moments on the difference between an emotion and a decision. I think too many people have a confusion in their heart about the difference between those two things. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our emotions that we do not make good decisions. And two things I want to look at specifically is the emotion of anger and the decision of forgiveness. Both of these things can control our lives. Both of these items can put us in a place where we are not the witness that we should be. We're not the spouse that we should be. We're not the employee that we should be. We're not the minister that we should be. It, it begins to affect every aspect of our life when there is unforgiveness and when there is anger embedded in our hearts and in our lives. And I just want us to understand what God says about being angry and what God says about forgiveness. And I believe that if we can get through those two things, if we can, if we can get our anger turned over to God in a righteous way, and if we can forgive in the way that God wants us to and in the right way, I believe that we will be more free in our lives than we've ever been before. So if you're struggling with anger and if you're struggling forgiveness, I believe God says this message is for you. Our society uh, at this moment is, is broken down and, and people are stressed and people uh, are, are bitter and they're angry and, and, and they're, they're uh, people on all sides of the issues that are going on today. And, and, and if you look at what's happening in our world, in our government, in our, in our lives, it, it, we see this anger and we see it affecting every person every day. So what does the Bible say about anger? How is a believer supposed to be angry? Is it okay to be angry? Is it a sin to be angry? Well, I think we can answer all of these by looking into God's word. In Ephesians chapter four and verse 26, the Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. I don't believe if it was a sin to be angry that the Bible would say, be ye angry. God understands that we have an emotion. Uh, we have several, many emotions. And none of us decide when an emotion is going to surface. None of us decide to be angry. We don't decide on many things. We don't decide on happiness. There, there, there's so many things that we cannot decide. And the things that we cannot decide to do, those all fall under the list of emotions. But anger is one of those emotions that probably affects us the most. It affects our witness. It affects uh, every aspect of our life. I know as a pastor, uh, if I'm at work and I get frustrated with a piece of equipment, maybe I throw a tool or something like that. Everybody looks at me and says, oh, you're a preacher. You're not supposed to be angry. You're not supposed to get mad. I'm not saying I should have threw the tool. But the Bible says that we have a right or a freedom, if you will, to be angry. But then it says, and sin not. So when is anger turned into sin? Well, let's look at the things first of what anger should not be. And the first thing I want to talk about is anger should never be based on jealousy, whether it's in the family, whether it's in the workplace, uh, whether it's in the church house, or whether it's in the government, where, wherever Wherever it is, anger should not be based on jealousy because jealousy is something that God commanded us not to do. We are to not live in a jealous state. It is my opinion that jealousy as an emotion is probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest human emotion, but out of that uh, comes anger many, many times. What anger should not be based on is jealousy. Anger uh, should never be the basis for decisions. Like at work, when I got angry at the machine and I threw the tool. The anger did not throw the tool. My mind decided that because I'm angry, I'm going to throw the tool. And sometimes I've broken those tools that I have thrown. And when I've done that sort of thing, I feel about that tall. 
These decisions that we make should never be based on anger. If I am angry at someone and I decide to jump up and punch them in the face, maybe the anger was justified. But going over and busting their nose is not a decision that should be made based on that anger. Now, if someone is attacking me and I'm defending myself, the decision to, to fight back is a decision to save my life. It's a decision to defend myself. But if I consciously think I'm going to go over and hurt that person because I am angry, that anger has turned into a decision that is sin. Uh, the, it should never be the reason for not doing the right thing. There are many times we know what we should do and, 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 and we, we don't do it because we're either angry at the person or we're angry about a situation or, or whatever it might be. And because we have that anger, we think we have the right to not do the right thing. And, and, and when we think about that, we are basing that decision to not do the right thing on an emotion when our decision to do the right thing should be based upon the word of God, regardless of our emotion. Anger should never be the reason for not doing the right thing. Or it should never be the reason for doing what's not the right thing, like punching the guy in the nose when I'm angry at him. Uh, if I decide to do something that's malicious or, or vindictive because of my anger, then I am deciding to, do, to not do what is right. And because of that, that anger has given birth to sin. And when we think about that, we think uh, we can be overwhelmed and, and we can begin to think that it's wrong to be angry because of all of these decisions. But remember, the decisions are the sin. The emotion is not. Well, we know what sin shouldn't be or shouldn't be a part of, or, or what anger uh, shouldn't be and what anger shouldn't be a part of, but what should anger be? Well, I believe the Bible is clear that it should be a righteous anger. And what is a righteous anger? The slaughter of millions of unborn children make me angry. I think that is righteous anger. The murder that I see in this world makes me angry. And when I think about that, I should have an anger in my heart about the sin that is going on. But out of that anger, I can't run over to an abortion clinic and bomb it or, or shoot the doctors just because I'm angry. The righteous anger over the sin is okay. And when we think about what's going on in our world today, there are things that we should be angry about but it should push us to do good things and right things and try to change things into the right way rather than make bad decisions or decisions that lead into sin. So the anger that we should have, the, the anger that is okay, is a righteous anger. When we are angry, it should be controlled. Uh, there's a difference between anger and temper. We should be able to control our temper even though that we can't control the fact that we are angry. We should be able to find a way to, to not let the anger control us. Instead, we should control the anger. And when we lose control because of the anger, then that is the problem. We lost control. We lost control of the emotion. And when we have the emotion controlled, then we make good decisions. Then we do the right things. Then we work towards uh, a, a, a fix for the problem that made us angry or a solution rather than causing more problems. Another thing that anger should be is temporary. Anger, the Bible says in verse 26 in chapter 4 of Ephesians, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You ever been up all night? Couldn't get any sleep because of anger in your heart? Sleep would have came a lot better if we would have been able to get rid of the anger before we put our head 
on the pillow. But this verse is very clear that anger is not something that we should carry with us. It's not something that we should allow to fester and, and, and to take up residence in our heart and our life. It should be something that we have for a short period. Well, how do we get rid of it? Well, number one, we have to bathe that anger in prayer. When I am super mad about something, the first thing I should do is not run my mouth. It should be to close my mouth and silently pray to God about that anger, about why I'm angry, about controlling the anger, and about taking the anger. And when I say take it, that's the next point, is to give the anger to God. The Bible says that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. When we think about anger and we think about those things, if we give those things over to God and we truly let go of that anger and let him have it, God will take it. And I will also say this. If you got somebody in your life that you're truly angry at, begin to pray for them. It is really difficult to stay mad at someone that you're lifting up in prayer. That person that has done the most wrong to you, that person that you are the most angry at, begin to pray for them every time the anger begins to fester. Every time it raises its ugly head, every time it starts to make you think about doing wrong things or making poor decisions based on that anger, begin to pray for that person that you're angry at. Now, what if that person is you. It doesn't change. You should begin to pray for you. Pray for the anger at yourself. Pray for the anger in your life. If you're mad at yourself for what you've done or what you've not done, it is still your ability to turn that over to God and allow God to take it. It's not your ability to get rid of it. It's your ability to let go and let God have it and let God take it. And finally, what if that anger is at God? That's a very difficult place to be. I've been there. And I remember someone telling me how big of a sinner I was because I was angry at God. And I remember thinking and going through the process of trying to understand this anger and what was going on. And I began to beat myself up about being angry at God. And the truth is, I never decided to be angry at God. But I will say this. When you are angry with someone, who should you talk to about it? Should it be the neighbor? Their neighbor? Or some cheerleader that's going to tell you how uh, righteous you are to have the anger at them? No. It's them. If you are angry at someone, you talk to that someone and get it straight. If you're angry with God when you don't feel like praying, pray. When you don't feel like reading the Bible because of this anger, read the Bible. When you don't feel like singing that praise song, sing that praise song. Open up those lines of communication so God can speak to you. Even though you believe in God, even though you trust him, and even though you think his will is righteous, sometimes we don't like it. Sometimes we don't, uh, we don't want to go through whatever it is that his will is. And we can get angry about that. But always know that God has the best interest for all. The Bible is clear. It says for all things, where we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. So we know even when we're angry at God, we can still take refuge in the fact that we know that everything is going to work out for the best. Everything is going to work out for the good. And the more you talk to God and the more you praise him and the more you read his word, you'll find that anger, that anger disappearing and being taken away. Well, anger at yourself, anger at others, and anger at God all have a common uh, a theme here. We have to be able to communicate with others Believe in ourselves and, and believe in the word of God and, 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 and communicate. And, and, and when I say communicate with yourself, that sounds silly. 
But many people have mastered the art of lying to themselves and believing it. It's honesty. Honesty with God, honesty with others, and honesty with ourselves. And when we can be honest about the situation, when we can be honest about the anger that we have, then we are on our way to being healed from that anger and letting God help us with that emotion. Well, anger and the emotion obviously leads into the decision of forgiveness. You're angry at that person? What does the Bible say to do? Ephesians chapter 4 and 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. When you think about anger and when you think about forgiveness, they do go together. But anger, again, is that emotion. And forgiveness is a decision. I decide to forgive someone. It is not something that I might feel like doing. It's not, I, I'm not going to forgive them when my heart is ready. That, that, that's not the truth about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a decision. And this says to forgive this, forgive them. Forgiveness is to be given in the way that God has forgiven us. Now, let's look at forgiveness. What forgiveness shouldn't be. Forgiveness should not be conditional. I've heard people say, well, if they'd only ask me for forgiveness, then I'd forgive them. No, you wouldn't. Because your forgiveness is based upon their asking for that forgiveness. And that is a condition that is, uh, that is on that. And the forgiveness, and, and, and I've had preachers argue with me. I've had people tell me I'm wrong. And don't take this the wrong way. But when we ask God to forgive us, the forgiveness is already there. We're just receiving the redemption. We're receiving the salvation. We're receiving the covering of our sins. God does not sit on his throne with bitterness in his heart. His love and forgiveness is not conditional based on our actions. Now, sanctification, uh, salvation, uh, for uh, the redemption, the washing away of our sins... Those are conditional on the fact that we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, that we, that we repent of our sins and we, and we do those things to accept Jesus and, and to have him come into our heart. But the forgiveness, God doesn't forgive us, when we, forgive us when we ask him. He's already forgiven us. We're just letting him apply that forgiveness to our heart. It's not, it should never be based on somebody's actions. It should never be conditional. If we say we forgive someone and, and, and we think, well, if you do this and if you do this and if you act this way, then I will forgive you. That is absolutely not true. The forgiveness should be unconditional and it should cover all things. The, 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 unforgiveness, or the forgiveness should never be temporary. Have you ever forgiven someone when you thought you did? And a few weeks later, they did something else, and it seemed like it erased all of that forgiveness. When I truly forgive someone, I cannot take that forgiveness back because of the new thing that they did. I can't take that forgiveness away from them because of the new uh, a crime they did against me or, or the sin that they did against me. The forgiveness is something. If I am forgiving them in the way that Christ or that God has forgiven me, then I am forgiving them forever for all things, not just what they're doing. I forgive them for what they've done, forgive them for what they're doing, and that forgiveness also covers what they're going to do. The forgiveness is not supposed to be temporary. It's, yeah, it's not, not supposed to be temporary. Uh, it, it should never uh, be emotionally based because I feel like forgiving you then I'll forgive you. When we have feelings and we base that, that forgiveness upon those feelings, we will find that that forgiveness is not true forgiveness because it's based on something that comes and goes. When we decide to forgive someone, it should be something that is, is consciously thought out and prayed over. It is not something that we can just say, today I feel like doing. It is something that we have to pour out to God and it's something that we have to say, God, help me forgive them. Help me forgive them in the way that you forgive them. Forgiveness should never be prejudiced. 
I think that sometimes there are certain people that we want to forgive, so we forgive. And there are other people that we don't want to forgive, and, and we, we hold forgiveness back from them. And the truth is we should be all forgiving. The forgiveness that we have in our heart should be for anyone who has done anything against us. And when I think about this, if God has forgiven them, who am I to not forgive them? Who am I to go over God's head and say, it's okay for you to forgive them, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to forgive them. We should pray and ask God to help us forgive all who have wronged us. These are things that forgiveness should not be. Well, what should forgiveness be? And some of this we've already covered. Forgiveness should be permanent. It's not something that can be erased. It's not something that can be undone. It's not something that has a time limit. It's not something uh, that we can just remove. True forgiveness is permanent. It's something that we give and that we never, ever, ever take back. Just like my forgiveness of my sins through Jesus Christ as my Savior. The forgiveness should be complete and full. It's not like we take a list of all of the things that they've done wrong to us and say, I can forgive this, this, and this, but I'm not forgiving this and this. That's not how it works. We either forgive them for all or we forgive them for none. Just like when I fell on my knees before a holy God and I asked for salvation and I asked him for, to forgive me, he didn't look at the list of all my sins and start picking out the ones that were forgivable and the ones that were not. He forgave me for all, all of my sins, for all of my life, all of the sins that I had committed, all of the sins that I'm committing and all of the sins that I'm going to commit. I have been forgiven for the forgiveness should not be or that should be unconditional i think we covered some of this already but there should not be any limitations put on our forgiveness and it should also be deliberate we can't half-heartedly say I'm going to forgive. We can't half-heartedly uh, put effort into forgiveness because when we forgive someone, we have to be deliberate. We have to deliberately say and deliberately pray and read in the word of God for the help that we need to apply that forgiveness that needs to be given. Whether they ask for it or not, whether they even know we forgave them or not. And the truth of the matter is this. Forgiveness is not for the person you're forgiving. Forgiveness is for you. There is no greater bondage than bitterness that is held in your heart. There is nothing that will destroy your walk with your faith. There's nothing that will destroy your witness more than unforgiveness in your heart. The Bible says you got ought against your brother. You better take care of that before you come to me. But how many times do we come before a holy God wanting him to forgive us and wanting him to bless us and all these things that we pray for and ask for, but yet we hold this unforgiveness in our heart. We hold this bitterness in our heart. You want freedom, true freedom in your life. Be a forgiving person. Be a deliberate, forgiving person. Person and the forgiveness that you have given will lift a weight off of you uh, that will absolutely give you freedom. Freedom in your ministry, freedom in your relationships, freedom in your, uh, your workplace, freedom in your life. And when you have that freedom and when you're free from unforgiveness and when you've given God the anger in your life and you've got a hold on those emotions, look out because God has you in a place that he can do amazing things with you. I just want to encourage you to look at things in the light of God's word. Know the difference between emotions and decisions. And those decisions that God has instructed us to make, make them. Follow the word of God, do the will of God, and love others the way that Christ has loved you. Let's pray. God, help us when we are angry. Help us to understand our emotions. Help us, Lord, to give the anger over to you. 
Help us to not harbor that anger in our hearts. Let us make good decisions, Lord. Decisions based on the teaching of your word and through prayer and not on the anger that is in our lives. God, help us to be a forgiving people. Help us to love others the way that you have loved us. God, if there's anyone that has not accepted your son, Jesus Christ, as Savior, the forgiveness is ready. It's already there. I pray, Lord, that if anyone is watching that needs your son, Jesus Christ, in their life, that they would receive that forgiveness and they would repent of their sins. God, I pray for the believer whose witness has been tarnished. Maybe they don't have the drive to do your will. Maybe they don't want to do the ministry that you've called them into because of anger and unforgiveness in their hearts. God, I pray, Lord, that you would show them the way, show them the forgiveness and the freedom that they can have. God, I pray that you just bless them in all ways. In Jesus' name, amen.